Welcome back again, Bots and Bits fans, to another episode of... Today we're taking a good look at the Pocket Toys Transphere, the Evil Energy 4 TS-04 Tuner S. This is, of course, their... ...of the DX9 Sonic Wizard, and it is uh, a one-to-one KO, it's not oversized or undersized. Box art looks pretty cool. Uh, it looks original, that's for sure. A couple of photos of the product. On the back, you can see it there with the uh, pocket toys. What was that? The KO Bridge Watcher. Look at my head out of pocket. All right. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get him out. All right, there he is out of the box, and I have to say he looks re really tiny, really, really scrawny. I guess I'm probably just more used to the Hot Soldiers sound wave, which isn't that much taller, but he's just he's so bulky. He's he's beefy. Yeah. Whereas this one is quite scrawny. No big deal, just something I felt like mentioning. And while we have the hot soldiers out, let's bring out the Mech Fans Toys Megatron. And I think this is Hasbro. Hasbro Bombshell. Yeah, that's him. So there's some size comparisons for you. Before we get right into the details of Tuna, let's go down and take a good look at his accessories. I'm not sure if they all come with three tapes. I think some of them only came with... Ravage and laser beak, but this one came with rat bat now tape wise they, they look great. They look great. Ravage is double the size but He does fit inside tuna no worries. Well the first time I did it. There was no worries. There we go Nice and secure nice and flush so the paint is pretty even across them You can see the silver there is done quite nicely. I'm not seeing any chips or hairs nothing maybe a little bit of overspray down there but considering the size and how intricate this is um, I'm pretty happy with that and to transform him it's it's really easy so we're just gonna pop the head out and fold the wings out and that's it there's no legs or little landing gear or anything that's just that's him uh, rat bat well it's it it's meant to be rat bat but it is just it's it's laser beak but pink so you've got gold paint on there, which looks fantastic. A bit of silver paint in here over white plastic, I think, or is it pink plastic? Either way, it's done well. A little bit of silver here on the white, and a little bit of silver on the head there. And to transform it, we're just going to extend them like that. I suppose you could leave it like that for a rat bat. The last tape is Ravage. Now this, uh, I think this this folds up really, really well. There's not too much paint to speak of, mostly grey plastic with just a tiny little bit of silver for his hip rockets. I'm not seeing any stress marks, or, uh, maybe one sprue mark, but overall it seems super tidy. Now I haven't transformed this yet, so let me figure it out. So head. Super small, super small. So I think they've done a good job with the engineering that, consider, considering his size, look at that. So tiny. Now I did mention before that there is a defect with this one, uh, and that is one side of the face is on there just fine. The other side uh, <laughs> was put on backwards. Hmm. Shouldn't be too difficult to fix. Look, there's, there's his face upside down. Could probably just push that pin out, but this isn't mine. This is on loan to me from my good buddy Sam. Um, I'll have to message him first and see if he wants me to do that or whether he doesn't really care or not. Either way, um, engineering wise, uh, it's pretty cool. And then lastly, we have his shoulder missile launcher, which um, it's nothing too fancy. Bit of blue plastic with some red paint done around there that's done all right. And his blaster is about the same, except it has the nozzle uh, jammed in it. And the shoulder cannon tabs on nice and tightly. It's not loose at all. And then when it comes to his gun, he holds it nice and firm no issues at all perfect the details on tuna they don't really um sort of jump out at you they're not really that bold but he does have quite a fair bit of paint on him so we're up on the face so he's got the silver mouthpiece and these uh cheek areas 
with some red paint in there for the eye. The visor does look like the paint is just a little bit too over the edges, but from like that far away, it doesn't really matter. This is just, well, this is nitpicking, I guess, on his face. The sculpt looks all right. A little bit of silver here for the button. And then when it comes to the chest piece, it's yellow paint over clear plastic. Um, this has been played with a little bit, not too much. And just that little bit of play, you can see that where you grab um, the the tape deck to open it, uh, the yellow paint is is starting to wear away. See along the top there, just from putting your finger up there, and because it is a stiff hinge, um, so just doing that motion, well, a handful of times, has started to wear the yellow paint off a little bit, which is a little bit, a little bit concerning. But it is quite cheap, so a little bit of yellow paint on the side here, which is done alright. Silver, some silver button detail there. Silver on the shins, yellow on the knees. All looks pretty good. I mean, yellow over blue always comes out a little bit green unless they flood it with paint. So um, it's it's good enough. We've got a little bit of damage just here along the fold and a little bit of scratching just there and the same up there. Details on the back look good. Uh, just some bare screws there. A little bit of gunmetal detail on the back, which is painted well. Yeah, overall the paint detail it is quite good with the exception of just that wear and tear there. Plastic looks pretty good as well. I'm not seeing really any sprue marks anywhere, but what I am seeing is really obvious mold lines, especially around the shoulders, uh, going all the way around. Some sprue marks inside the shoulder joint, which might get in the way. Well, not really. Sometimes the sprue marks inside the ball socket can get in the way of articulation. Some injection points just there on the inside of the shoulder, but apart from that, um, it all looks it all looks really, really tidy. Articulation wise, he's got everything you could want. He's got the shoulder all the way up like that on a ball socket and all the way around. Doesn't seem to be impeded at all. We do have that same transformation hinge from the masterpiece. It's not a solid like click in, so if you fiddle with it, it does come undone. Uh, we've got a ball socket for the elbow, so you get just over 90 degrees, plus you can rotate it wherever you want. Same with the wrist, is on a ball socket, so you have because of the transformation, you can have him all um, tea party if you want. Or you can just rotate it whichever way you need it. Nearly forgot, head is head is on a ball socket and that's actually got a big chunk of flash behind it. Not that you're doing a full 360 anyway. This is, um, let me just take this off, this is really, really stiff. And I don't want to grip it too hard because his mouth uh, is a point. I wouldn't want to take the paint off his nose. So I'm just going to leave it really tight, like too tight in my opinion. Also has an awesome waist swivel, which as I can see here is for transformation, I guess. But whatever, I'll take it. I already mentioned the hinge on that. The hips are on ball sockets. One of them's good, one of them's a tiny bit loose. It's not impacting posing or anything like that. All right, we have an upper thigh swivel on a mushroom, which I'm not getting much out of because it looks like there's flash inside there, so it's not, uh, it's, it's gotta go over the, the flash. The other side's about the, about the same. So I'm getting the rotation in this upper ball sock, which you, can see, which you can see is wearing something off. I'm getting some sort of plastic wear on the inside of that that looks like there's flash just on the inside of the ball socket there that's wearing away. So I guess that's going to get looser uh, over time. Down to the knee, now we have, where's the bend? So we have a bend at the top here, which gets you a little over 90 degrees. Because of the transformation, you can go all the way on this second hinge if you really want. The knees aren't loose at all, they don't feel particularly tight, and that double hinge doesn't have anything to tab into. It, too bad I didn't have a couple of tabs there or just something to hold it in. That would have been good. What I do like and what I found really lacking in the Hot Soldier Soundwave was at Ankle Rock. You get a awesome A stance. Oh, my bad. Get an awesome A stance out of that. And the, um, the Hot Soldiers, there's no Ankle Rock at all. So he's always standing on the sides of his feet, which looks a little bit lame. And that's it for articulation and details, I think. Um, so far, I'm pretty impressed, especially for the price. I'm going to have to look up what it costs. $13.14 USD. Anyway, <laughs> let's transform this guy up and have a good look.
he is all together, and he tidies up really, really nicely. I mean, he transforms like every other sound wave that ever existed that turns into a uh, cassette player, basically. But it does tidy up really nice. We've got some replacement buttons from his butt, which are over here. Uh, they do say play. There is record, stop, and um, fast forward and rewind. Got a couple of pins there that stick out a little bit. But overall, tidies up really well. The back looks like as you would expect it, uh, with the exception of the little um, the gun nozzle. I think it comes out. I'm giving it a little bit of a twist, and it's not giving me any. So I'm not. I'm not going to force it too much. It could be an antenna, I guess. Um, but yeah, the back looks like as you would expect. One thing I do like is that they, the shoulder cannon and the gun, they tab into the back, but then also the hands fold up and tab into the bottom, making all of this really, really secure. That is a brilliant idea, um, That and it works really well. This thing is not flopping apart at all. It's just It just holds. It holds really well. Now before we go, one thing I forgot to mention is if you put Ravage or any of the other tapes really in, um, holds in there really well. If you're not able to get him out afterwards, what you're meant to do is, let's just, uh, we're going to grab his gun. You just fold this bit down here where his head is, and you can see Ravage there on the inside. So we're just going to use the gun and just push him out. So they won't get stuck. Anyway, that's him. So, is it worth it and should you buy it? It's half the price of the DX9. Some of the colors are different. As far as this goes as a product, as quality, everything feels great. The paint is pretty good, apart from that little bit of wear and tear on the, um, the cassette cover. The plastic looks great. There's no stress marks, hardly any sprue marks. It's finished up really, really well. So I think if this is your legend scale that you're collecting, the price seems right and you like the colors, then yeah, I'd recommend you go the Pocket Toys uh, tuner. For those of you collecting Hot Soldiers and the Mech Fans toys line, um, this is probably a little bit too small. You probably want to go the Hot Soldiers Soundwave, even though uh, the articulation isn't as good on that one as it is on the Pocket Toys. It's still a bit more in scale. So if this is the right scale for you and you like all the colors, um, I can't see a reason why you wouldn't get it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe to the channel. Remember to check out my Facebook for daily news and updates on KO and third party stuff. There's also a new Facebook group called Total Legends that you can uh, come along and join. Post some photos of your collection and anything you've been buying or any questions you want to ask about Transformers in general or about the channel. I'm happy to go in there and answer and talk with you guys. Also have Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget to check those out. And as always, guys, thank you very much for your time and thanks for watching.